Hey guys, how's your Shield K9? Um, I'm going to be uh, doing a quick little video for you on our phone with your dog. And I'm going to be running you through all the obedience commands that you need to know um, and how to best maintain him structurally in your home and um, you know how to manage him into protection as well. Okay guys, so the first thing that you need to know is dogs are consequence-based learners. So sorry, uh, so Arco has been taught everything, you know, with, with a positive foundation. He received a lot of rewards for doing the right things. Um, but he also at this point also understands that there is a consequence for doing the wrong thing. Moving forward, the way that he is going to listen to you, he, he understands all the basic commands. He's actually a very obedient and reliable dog. But the way that you're going to ensure that he continues to listen to you is that you're going to continue to deliver consequences to the dog for the things that he does. You're going to give him good consequences and you're going to give him bad consequences. So an example of this is Arco loves food, right? So it's not going to kill you to carry a few treats in your pocket, especially in the beginning. And when he does something right, so for example, you ask him to sit and he sits or you ask him to come and he comes and you give him a reward, this is reinforcing that behavior. Arco also loves the ball, so if you pull a ball out and play with him when he does the right thing, this also reinforces that behavior. Um, at, the, at the same time, there also needs to be a consequence for bad behavior or a, um, if the dog refuses to perform an obedience command that he knows how to do or if he doesn't do it properly. And for this, the easiest method at this point for you guys moving forward will be the electric collar. And Arco is going to come with an electric collar and you are going to be using this consistently with the dog, um, especially in the beginning. But I recommend that the dog wear this for his entire life. You don't necessarily have to use it, but this is one of those tools that's an insurance measure, right? It's better to have it and not use it than to need it and not have it. So I, I strongly recommend moving forward that you ensure your dog wears this a lot in the beginning and you never go out in public with it without having this on him. So I'm going to go over the basic functions of the e-collar with you. Please keep in mind there is a much more detailed video on this um, that I will also link you to and there's also going to be a more detailed video on how to um, you know correct your dog, how to reward your dog and so on and so forth. But this is going to be just a quick personal video for you guys um, on how to manage Argo. So a couple things to zoom into the uh, this so they can see, right? So this is the transmitter and this is the receiver, okay? In order to turn the transmitter on and off, there is a on-off button on the back of this. I'm gonna push and hold until I see this flash off. I'm gonna push and hold that big button again until it flashes on. You see zero, the number zero, and the letter C. That stands for the level that the collar is set to and the mode, the mode is continuous. So basically as long as I push the button, right? As long as I push the button, the dog will receive stimulation with the collar when it's set to continuous. There are other modes, there's momentary, okay? So if I push the MC button on the back, there's an MC button back there. There's momentary, and you can see now you see MC on the screen, so it's momentary continuous. And then there's exclusively momentary. So if you hold this small button on the back, you'll see it changes. So now it just says M, right? We, we don't want these modes. We are only going to be using the continuous mode on this collar. So I'm gonna push and hold that small black button on the back. And now again, you see, I'm just gonna keep doing it until I see exactly. Just that C and the number, okay? How to change the level? You're gonna go up and down on the collar with this little dial at the top. Arco is usually a pretty sensitive dog, so he doesn't generally need high levels. The way to, the best way to think about the collar is when your dog is normal, like he's not overly excited, he doesn't need much. Just a little bit. He just needs to feel it a little bit, and it's more than enough. When your dog becomes excited, like for example, if there's, you know, if he's doing bite work or if there's a squirrel, this is when you're probably going to need to turn it up a little bit. So the best way to explain the collar is think about it as if you're talking to a child. If the child is, you know, neutral and calm, you're obviously not gonna raise your voice, you're gonna speak in a normal tone of voice. Whereas if the child gets really escalated and excited, you're gonna raise your voice to ensure that you're heard. It's the same thing with the e-collar, okay? So if the, the dog becomes excited, don't hesitate to turn it up a little bit to get his attention. And if that's not working, turn it up even more. I guarantee you, it'll get his attention and he knows what he's doing. So, 
now that we've covered how to turn it up and down, let's talk about how you're actually going to stimulate the dog. And by stimulate the dog, I mean you're actually going to deliver a correction to the dog. There's a black S button on the side. It says S on it. When you push that button, you stimulate the dog, okay? There's a red S button. That's the boost button. So that adds five to whatever level you're on. So let's say you're on 10. If I head the, hit that red button, now I'm at 15, okay? So it just gives you the ability to get the dog at a little bit of a higher level without physically turning up the collar. Personally, I recommend you turn it up, um, you know, that way you kind of, you know, you can get a little bit higher that way. The boost button only adds five. To turn your collar off, just because I turned this on doesn't mean that this is on. Now, this is on right now. I'm going to just quickly turn it off. There's a little red dot here, okay? That red dot is a magnet. There's another red dot there. Touch them together, now the collar's on. Touch them together, now the collar's off. When the collar's on, you'll see that green light, and then it'll keep flashing green. If it flashes orange or if it flashes red, it means your collar's about to die, and you need to recharge it. These collars last about 24 hours um, with moderate use, and it takes about 45 minutes of having them plugged in. They're little jacks on the back, okay? You plug them in with the charger that you'll receive. It takes about 45 minutes for them to fully charge, and then you can use them again. With this collar, you see these contacts? These contacts have to make contact with your dog's skin. If they're not touching his skin, if the collar's on really loose, he will act like he's not feeling it because he, he won't be. If even just one of these contacts is touching his skin, it will not work. Both contacts need to be touching the dog's skin. So obviously you're gonna put the collar on quite snugly. So I'm gonna demonstrate how we put the collar on Arco. So Arco walks on my left side. So I don't want the collar on the right side of the dog because it's gonna be between him and my leg. I want the box on the left side of his neck. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the box here on the left side of his neck, okay? Not super high, not super low, right in the middle there. And I'm just gonna pull it nice and snug. Now this is the part where a lot of people fail. They're worried that they're gonna choke the dog so they don't pull it tight. Believe me, if you don't hear choking noises, it's not tight, okay? What you're gonna do is you're gonna pull this strap and you're just gonna keep pulling until it's hard to pull anymore, all right? Now if I really reefed on it, I could get another couple notches in there, but where I'm at now is perfect, all right? so. We've got the collar on the dog, the collar's turned on. Now, Arco is generally a 10 on the collar. The best way to explain is when you're using the e-collar, the best way to know that if it's too high is if the dog is yelping or overreacting. I don't want an overreaction from the dog, but I want some reaction. The best way to think about it is if I pop the dog on the leash, what's he gonna do? He's gonna give me a little twitch. He's gonna give me a little head twitch. That's what I want to see from the dog in normal circumstances. Now, if he's ignoring me because he got really excited, obviously I'm going to need a higher level on the e-collar. And I'm not going to delay. I'm not going to play this like slow game where I go like two, three, four. I'm going to just quickly turn it and maybe he'll get a quick one on like 30 or 40. So he'll get a, he'll get a much higher level correction. Usually if the dog is fooling around, um, you know, with, with a behavior that he knows. So for instance, you're, you're telling him to heal and he's not healing properly and you've given him a couple low level corrections and he's still ignoring you, then it's time to quickly escalate. So I'll just quickly go up, maybe I'll be at a 10, I'll go up quickly to a 30, 40, I'll catch him high a time or two for making that mistake and then you'll see he'll become a lot more careful and considerate about what he's doing. Then I'll go back down. All right, remember that voice analogy that I use? If I raise my voice at somebody and they start listening to me, I'm not gonna keep yelling, I'm gonna bring my voice back down. And it's really important that you go up and down on the collar as necessary. In the beginning, he'll test you more. Once he knows you and he trusts you and he's used to working with you and he understands that you're gonna hold him accountable for bad behavior, you'll find that you don't really need to use it very much at all. Okay, so let's, the last thing that you need to know about the e-collar is there's a three hour rule with the e-collar. The e-collar is on the dog quite snugly. I can barely get two fingers under the strap, okay? The big thing that you need to know is if he's gonna be wearing it all day because you're hiking with him or something, please move that e-collar frequently. And when you move it frequently, what it does is it makes sure those two prongs aren't staying on his neck in the same place 
causing a sore. They can cause a contact sore just from friction. So every three hours, just loosen it, move it to a different position on his neck, and tighten it, and you'll be okay. Uh, and the last thing, if you're using the e-collar and something weird is happening, like it's not working, it's just like you're hitting him on the e-collar with the electric, with the, with the level that he normally responds to, he's not responding, check the tightness. Your collar is either turned off by accident, or maybe ran out of battery, forgot to charge it, or it's not tight. And nine times out of 10, it's not tight. So that's enough on the e-collar. Let's talk about how you're going to live with Arco in the house. So in the beginning, in your home, what I strongly recommend is a combination of the crate and the place command. As you can see, Arco's actually doing place right now. And place is basically any raised surface that I point to and tell the dog to go to, that's place. I strongly recommend these k and pet cots. They're excellent for um, you know the place command because they're comfortable, they're easy to clean, and you can buy them on Amazon. So again, that's K and H pet cots. Okay? Man, they're on sale tomorrow. So, you're gonna use this for when you're in the house with them. This is not something where you put them there and then you leave the house or you put them there and you sleep at night, okay? This is something where only if you're with him and you're awake and you're able to somewhat supervise him, this is great for him because it allows him to be loose in your house without him being locked up, but at the same time, you know where he is, he's situated, so you know he's not wandering around and getting into trouble. The other thing that you're gonna do with him is you're gonna put him in a crate if you're not with him. Okay, so like if you're leaving the house in the beginning or overnight, you should spend that time in the crate. So the crate, the crate command, I'll show you briefly here. Arco, good boy. The crate command is very easy. The dog goes into the kennel. The command is kennel, okay? The dog goes into the kennel when he's given the command and he waits there until he hears, okay, good boy. Arco, kennel, good. And please, to not make noise in the kennel, if you have a problem with your dog making noise in the kennel, then you can put the e-collar on him and um, use it as necessary to correct him making noise in the kennel. He's generally pretty quiet and clean in the kennel, so you shouldn't have any problem with that. Okay, good boy. So when you take your dog out of the kennel, obviously, sit. You're gonna put him in a sit. You're gonna put any necessary equipment that you need to put on him as an e-collar, because remember, Unless there's a problem with him making noise in the crate, he's not letting his e-collar into the crate. Um, you're gonna put his equipment on him and then you're gonna go about your day. Arco, please. All right, now, when I send my dog to place, if it's something new that he doesn't know, like let's say I'm using a picnic table and he's a little bit worried about getting up on that picnic table, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna grab his collar and I'm gonna guide him onto it a few times. I'll say place, I'll put him on it, and I'll say break, and I'll let him come off, and then I'll say place, and I'll put him on it, and I'll say break, and I'll let him come off, okay? And I'll just do that until he gets really used to going on and off of it. Usually a few times is all that you need. Then I'll say place, and then if he comes off of it, there will be a correction for coming off of it. And again, the correction is gonna be on a moderate level. I wanna see that he's feeling it, but I don't need to see him scream or anything like that. Okay? So he needs to stay on there until he's given permission to come off. He doesn't have to lie down. He doesn't have to sit down. He can do whatever he wants as long as he keeps all four paws on that bed. You can have multiple places throughout your house. So in the beginning, he's either in the crate or he's on place or he's physically with you. All right. Now what I do is after a few months of this, you know, the dog's going to be used to your home. He's going to be used to the people coming in and out of your home. He's going to be used to going to the bathroom outside and he's going to have a bit of a routine. Now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna start giving him incremental freedom throughout the house. And what that means is, I'm just gonna let him loose a little bit. So only, of course, when I'm there, I won't ask him to place and I'll let him just walk around. I'm gonna see what he does. If he just kind of walks around, lies on the floor, sits next to me, these are all good things. If he's tearing around the house looking for trouble, and by looking for trouble, I mean he's looking for something that he can chew on or looking for something to eat, then I know he's not ready for that freedom yet. 
So I give the dog incremental freedom when I'm supervising him. And then I see, okay, he's calm, he's doing well. Maybe he has a little bit of a hiccup, he gets a little bit excited playing with the kids or something. I'll send him to his bed again. He stays on his bed until, again, he's calm. Then I'll give him maybe a little bit of time off of it. And by doing that, he shows me his behavior in the house. Then I'll start maybe leaving him out at night, leaving him out when I leave the house. But it's an incremental thing. And if I notice any problems, like, oh, all of a sudden he chewed a shoe, or maybe he peed on the couch or something, God forbid, immediately we're going to go back to the system of crate and place. And I'll remove his freedom again until he's doing well. It's really important to just install the correct habit from the get-go and not create a situation where the dog comes into your home, is given too much freedom right away, and develops bad habits. Okay guys, so now that we've talked about the house stuff, let's talk about how you're gonna walk the dog. So I strongly recommend you give your dog two structured walks a day. And what a structured walk consists of is loose leash walking or off leash walking, healing, sit down and recalls. So we're gonna talk about the commands that your dog knows. So we've already covered two commands. Your dog knows the kennel command, your dog knows the place command. And for controlling your dog outside, your dog knows foos, which means heel. Your dog knows sits, which means sit. Your dog knows plots, which means lie down. And your dog knows his name, Arco. And Arco means come. You can say Arco come, that works as well. So I'm gonna go over all these commands and show you how to incorporate them into being able to control your dog on the leash and off the leash. Your dog is not allowed to stop doing something until he hears break. Break means release, okay? So if I've told him, Marco, play. Okay, if I've told him to play, he has to wait until he hears break to get up. Okay, now he's up, all right? Same thing for any command I tell him. Plots, break, good boy. And what I wanna see from the dog is that he breaks and leaves the command when he hears the word. But if he, if he breaks a command before being given the break signal, immediately you're gonna correct the dog with a verbal correction, ah, uh, ah, uh, and then you're gonna re, 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 remind the dog what command that he or she should be doing. So if, for instance, he was on place and he came off, I would say, ah, uh, ah, uh, place, and I would correct the dog back to place, all right? Okay guys, so now that we've talked about the commands that your dog knows, there's a couple other things that you do need to know um, when it comes to giving your dog information. When your dog is doing something well, tell him he's a good boy. A lot of people don't say to the dog when he's doing well anything. And it's, 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 it's almost like you're not paying the dog for good behavior. And it's not rewarding for the dog at all. You want to reward the dog with, with good behavior, whether it's with a piece of food, whether it's with his toy, or whether it's just with your praise. Good boy. Good job. Let him know. He did well. I like what you're doing. Keep doing it. Do the dog when your dog does something good. Don't overdo it, but don't underdo it either. Arco, oops. Good boy, Arco. Good job. A little bit of a touch to the, to the side of the head or to the nose. Dogs really like that. Good boy. Yeah. Good job. You see, he likes it. It's very pleasant for him. Sits. Good. Marco, foos. Good boy. Yeah. On the other side, when he's doing something wrong, we're not just going to correct him. We're also going to verbally let him know that he did something wrong. So we have two levels of verbal signal for bad behavior. Number one falls into the category of obedience mistakes. So for instance, if I told him to go on his place, he didn't go on his place, or he was on his place and then came off of it, I would say, ah, ah, okay? So for us, it's ah, ah, and then I'll repeat the command, place, and I'll correct him if necessary to get him to go back. At this point, a lot of the time, if you say ah, ah, on his own, he'll just fix himself, but if he doesn't, okay? Right away, you're gonna give him a physical correction with the e-collar or with the leash, all right? I strongly recommend using the e-collar. So for instance, if he came off of his place, I said, ah, ah, place, and he didn't go back, I would say, ah, ah, place again, but I would hit the button on the e-collar so that he got the correction. The only reason ah, ah, works is because we paired it with a correction in the beginning. So for instance, if I said to lie down, and he laid down, and then he got up, I say, ah, ah, down. 
I can give him an e-collar correction with the uh-uh, or I don't need to. But again, if he's constantly getting up, I need to start correcting the dog every single time he gets up. It's one of those things where you give the dog a little bit of leeway. You say, uh-uh, and you see him fix himself, it's a good sign. But if he keeps making the same mistake over and over and over again, you need to go from uh-uh to uh-uh with a correction, not uh-uh just by itself. Otherwise, you're just making noise at the dog, and your noise is starting to mean less and less and less. The next level of correction is no. When I say no, I say it loud. I make sure the dog hears me. And it's for very bad behavior. So for instance, you know, we were walking and uh, he saw another male dog and that male dog barked at him and he barked back at that dog. That would be no. And I would give him a very firm correction on the e-collar for that. All right. So again, that's one of those things where there's less leeway. Usually when I say no, there is going to be a correction. All right. So the first thing we need to talk about is loose leash walking, all right? So I've got a leash attached to his flat collar. I have his e-collar on, which I should always have when I'm walking the dog. And basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this to a medium level. So for our call, it's usually like a 12, 13, something like that, okay? I'm going to hold the leash in my left hand and I'm going to hold the e-collar in my right hand. My finger is on the button, okay? And I'm ready to go. I'm going to walk with the dog. And if he pulls me, all I'm going to do is I'm going to pop back on the leash and stim him at the same time. So it's almost as if the collar bit him for pulling. So it's really important. Don't pop him just because you think he might pull. Pop him only if he does pull. So if you're walking and all of a sudden the leash goes tight, you're just going to give him a little pop and a stim, all right, for pulling. Great. What you're going to see is the dog kind of give him a little bit of a jump and he should stop pulling. If he goes back to pulling over and over again and you keep doing this, it's telling you your level is not high enough. So just quickly turn the collar up, you know, if you're in a 10, go to a 20, catch him high a couple times, just like what we talked about earlier. Teach him, hey, don't pull around, dude, don't pull on the leash, and you're gonna see that he immediately relaxes you can turn your collar back down again. So we're gonna go outside and talk about leash walking. Great. Touch to his flat collar, and I've got my e-collar ready to go. We're just gonna walk. So. Watch. Right. Pulse me right there. You see, I see a little bit of a pullback, and I hit the electric at the same time. Now you see that. There's the actually police there. He pulled me a little bit again. Right. And I want to see this behavior from the dog, right? He's not, he doesn't have to heal, but he doesn't, he cannot pull me on the leash. If I stop, I expect him to stop. He doesn't have to sit. Like, he's kind of auto-healing right now and staying real close to me. I don't care where he is. He can be out there. He can smell the ground. He can pee. He can do whatever he wants. He just can't pull me on the leash. So if he pulls me on the leash, whether, wait, whether I'm walking, whether I'm walking, or whether we're stopping, I need to see a dog that doesn't pull me on the leash. Okay, guys, let's talk about the heel command. The heel command is where the dog walks next to me on the leash. This is a much more strict command. The dog can't be smelling the ground. He can't be um, leaving my side. His shoulder and my shoulder need to line up perfectly. And basically his only job is to stay next to me and pay attention to me. So the command is foos, remember that. So what I'm gonna do is I'll demonstrate first on the leash. Arco, foos. All right, so the dog comes to my left side and it is always the left side. And now he's gonna walk next to me. If he makes a mistake, so you see his shoulder and my shoulder line up, his foot and my foot line up. If he gets in front of me, I'm gonna do that uh -uh, and I'm gonna catch him with the electric. So his shoulder and my shoulder need to line up. So he's a dog that has a tendency to forge, right? And by forge, I mean he's always a little bit in front. Ah. 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 Foos. So I give the dog the command foos. He's next to me. If he was to get in front of me, which is the most common thing with this, right? 
All I'm going to do is I'm going to say uh, uh, and hit the electric at the same time. Okay? The reason why I say hit the electric at the same time in the beginning, your dog is going to test you a little bit. So in the beginning, you should really show him that you mean business. But once he's settled down, if I've been walking like this for a little bit and he makes a mistake, I'll just say uh, uh, and you'll see he fixes himself on his own. When I stop, sit. I want to see the dog sit. All right? Again, in the other video, you'll see more details on this. Um, and I'm going to send you the link to that video. That, will, that video is a long video, so, you know, but it'll give you a lot more detailed information about all of this. Sit. Okay. So, my dog needs to stay in the healing position until he's been given the break, right? So, if I say, Arco Fus, and then I say, break. Now, he's back to loose leash walking, right? He can go do whatever he wants. You can see he's a little bit away from me. He can smell the fence. Break. Now we've transitioned to loose leash walking. So when I do a structured walk, it's a mixture of both those things. I'll do maybe, if I'm doing a half hour walk, I'll do maybe 15 minutes of loose leash walking and 15 minutes of healing. Okay, and I'll mix it up. I won't just do 15 and 15. I might do like, you know, five minutes of this, three minutes of that, 10 minutes of this, three minutes of that. And I make sure that the dog has his time to kind of go and smell and do the things that dogs like to do, but also that he practices the healing as well. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk to you guys a little bit about the positions. Marco, cuts. Okay, so the positions are sit and down. All right, so when I give the dog the command, seats or plots, plots means down. When I give the dog those commands, he must hold those commands until he hears the break signal. Break. Good boy. Seats. Break. Good boy. Ah, stop. So the dog's healing. When I come to a stop, sits. Good. Now the stay is implied. The stay is always implied. The dog is not to break the command until he hears break. Break. So right there, that, that brings me to another quick topic. Plex, Marco's a young dog, okay? He likes to jump a little bit. If he jumps, You'll notice I don't say down, I don't say any of that stuff. I say ah, and I correct him with the e-collar. It's an automatic correction whenever the dog jumps on me. You, if you're not wearing, if you don't have an e-collar, just say ah and clock him in the head with your hand. That'll work very well as well. But don't put up with that jumpiness. Otherwise, when he gets a little bit older, it can be a bit more annoying, right? Plus, so I'm gonna give him the down command. Plus, all right, dog has to stay in the position until he hears break. Seats. And again, you'll see the dog stays in the position until he hears break. If he got up, I'm just going to say no plots or uh, uh plots. You'll see. He's already, he thinks he's in trouble. He's not. But because I'm saying these words, right? Uh, uh, plots. And I'm going to let him know. You've got to stay there. You made a mistake. Break. Seats. Good. If you tell the dog to lie down and he sits, or if you tell the dog to sit and he lies down, that's still wrong. Make sure you correct that. Uh, uh, sits or uh, uh, plots. Plots. Good boy. All right? Seats, break. And you'll see I do a little bit of a hand gesture too to help the dog. There's nothing wrong with doing that. Arco, plats. Just gives the dog a little bit of extra help. Arco, boost. You'll see I tap my side for the heel as well. Good. Break. Now it's, okay, go, 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 go. Let's talk about the recall, guys. With the recall, what we're gonna do is we're gonna say the dog's name and the word come. All right, he's not really leaving. There we go. Watch the dog. Marco, come, boost. Good. So you see there, I told the dog to come. I said his name, come, and then heal. All right. Now, if he hadn't come right away, like if I hadn't seen him pick up his head, turn around to come to me, I would have repeated. So if I said Arco come and he ignored me, I would have said Arco come with the electric the next time. Remember, the electric is the enforcer behind all your commands. All right, break. Okay. Marco, come. Boost. Good boy. And you'll see I'll praise him for a job well done. I suggest you give him treats in the beginning for doing this so well. I'll let him know, hey, buddy, good boy. Okay. Break.
Hi, Cole. Come. Foose. Good boy. And you'll see I always call him to the heel. Okay. Okay. Now, if I don't want him to come and sit next to me, I, if I don't want him to come and sit next to me, all right, what I'm going to do is I'll just say, Arco, come when he comes, and he's close enough, I'll just break him. So sometimes when you're walking with the dog, sometimes when you're walking with the dog, you don't necessarily need him to come to you, but you just need him to not get into whatever it is he's getting into. Maybe he's heading towards a pile of poop. Maybe he's going towards another dog that you don't want him to go to. You're just going to say his name, come, and he's going to come towards you. And then when he's close enough, you can just say, break, and let the dog know it's free. He's free to go. Right? Marco, break. Yeah, okay. Marco, break. See? What? Okay, so this brings me to um, the next topic. We've covered the sit. We've covered the down. We've covered the loose leash walking and the healing. You are going to do all of these on a structured walk, okay? You need to practice these commands every day so that he remembers them and so that you remember them. Don't just wait until you really need them. So every day, at least once per day, your dog should go out. He should do loose leash walking, he should do recalls, he should do healing, and he should do sits and downs, all right? And that's how you're gonna keep him in that nice state of control that he's in right now, all right? Um, I think it's important to understand too, Arco is a 11 month old dog. He's very young. Okay, he's not really going to hit his full maturity until he's two, two and a half years of age. At this age, there's a couple of things from a behavioral standpoint you need to keep an eye on. Number one, no dog parks whatsoever. And it's not because he's particularly aggressive. He actually really likes other dogs. He likes playing with them. But as he gets older and he's going to grow more into himself, you're going to see that he becomes less tolerant, especially of other male dogs. The other thing to keep in mind, Arco is very focused on the handler. When he walks in public, he doesn't really think about other dogs. He doesn't think about strangers. He's very focused on the handler. In order to maintain that, I strongly suggest you restrict any access that he has to strange people or strange dogs. That means, oh, hey, he's a cute puppy. Can I touch him? No, sorry, he's in training. Oh, hey, my dog likes other dogs too. Can they meet? No, I'm sorry, they can't. Um, he's in training. I'll just say that, or I'll say he's not friendly or something like this. This way, my dog never learns that other dogs and other people are either a good time or a bad time. I want a dog who's completely neutral to strange dogs and strange people. And the way that you accomplish that is by not allowing frivolous interaction, okay? So really limit any kind of interaction with strange dogs if you can possibly avoid it. If it does happen, maybe you're in an off-leash um, dog, well, you shouldn't be in an off-leash dog park. Maybe you're on a hiking trail or something, you run into another dog, just get him, hey, Arco, come on, buddy, let's go. You know, and just try and do that pass as quick as possible. Don't be surprised if when he gets a little bit older, he becomes pretty intolerant of other intact males making contact with him. That being said, if you're walking him and he decides he wants to become overly interested in another dog or anything else like that, you need to strongly correct him for that behavior. So if he pulls on the leash towards another dog, uh -uh, you're going to give him a big correction. If he's in a heel and he tries to leave heel to go to another dog, uh -uh, big correction. The other thing to keep in mind is as he gets up older, he's going to also become less tolerant of strangers interacting with him. It has nothing to do with the training everything to do with the genetics of the dog. These dogs are bred for guard work, they're bred for uh, you know, police work, and it's natural that they are pretty, not antisocial, but they just don't appreciate strangers. They don't know, he's, I know he's cute and cuddly right now, you're not gonna let strangers touch this dog. I can't stress that enough. And even if he seems like he's okay with it, I'm still telling you, don't allow it to happen. Uh, the only people that need to be touching your dog are your family members. If your kids have other kids over to play, it's okay if he's on place, but if things are getting real rowdy and exciting, my suggestion is to lock the dog up. 
you don't want him, you know, making a mistake and thinking that his kids are being, you know, attacked by another child, which obviously wouldn't be happening. But, you know, he's a dog at the end of the day, safety first. So this is my suggestion when it comes to maintaining you know, the dog's behavior. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about protection after this, and I'll show you some videos and, and, and help you kind of understand what you're going to be doing in terms of the dog um, in a protection scenario. That being said, don't allow him to frivolously bark at people. Okay, so like if he sees somebody who's like, hey, that guy looks a little sketchy, I'm going to bark at him. If that guy really isn't sketchy and it's just him deciding, hey, I don't like that guy, I'm going to bark at him, stop that behavior. It's a no and a correction. We don't allow the dog to be inappropriately aggressive. He's only allowed to be aggressive in appropriate situations, and those are very few and far between. Okay, so it's time to go over the protection training commands. The first command means come to my left side and bark at the bad guy. And that is pronounced like so. So basically you're rolling your R's. The next one is watch, watch, watch. Basically means pull on the leash and guard me. So I'm going to create back pressure on this command on the leash and just hold the dog as he barks, keeping, um, you know, the adversary away from me. Darsh is bite. Basically means that the dog should engage. Aus means let go. Dog should release. At times, even the best trained dogs can become excited when they're doing this kind of work. So sometimes you should accompany this with a correction or and a repetition of the command if the dog doesn't release on the first command. So we're going to go through um, some actual scenarios and I'm going to voice over these scenarios and kind of walk you through what's going on. Um, needless to say, it is very unlikely that your dog will ever bite anybody in any capacity beyond um, a sport training scenario. So here, two sketchy guys come out. I light the dog up. I keep them next to me in the position. Um, they, One of them threatens me, so I send the dog on him. The other one runs away. In real life, we will never send the dog on somebody, um, and this dog is not to be sent on anybody. This dog is for defensive and deterrent purposes only. So the dog is holding the man down as he is trained to do. And at the appropriate time, you're gonna see me oust the release command and rrr. And when I say rrr, even if he's by the decoy, he needs to come back next to me and start barking. In this one, watch, 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 watch. He's on the leash and he's doing his job. He's keeping the, the bad guy away from me. He's just keeping me safe and he's holding the bad guy back. And that is the that is the summation of this command. Watch, 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 watch. Good boy. And for this command, this is gonna be a surprise attack. I don't have time to tell the dog to deter the guy. I am physically attacked. Darsh, that is the engage command. Darsh, darsh, the whole time. Darsh, good boy, darsh, darsh. Hold that guy so I can, you know, either help you get get it get him down and run away call the police and i'm gonna wait Aus. and now he's back next to me good boy good boy keep him away and we drive that scary guy off so for this one uh the dog is next to me in the healing command oh my gosh there is a sketchy guy next to my chuck get out of here dude and we light the dog up with the rolling of the r's uh, the dog gets a little excited. I repeat, and he comes back next to me and barks and drives the scary and sketchy guy away. Job well done. Good boy. Sit. That's how we settle him down at the end. I'll say sit and or, and or plots. And if he doesn't do it, he will be corrected. And in this scenario, guy walks into my business. I don't know what's going on with him. He's a little bit sketchy. All right. Oh, my God. He's got a knife. Darsh. Dog engages. Darsh, good boy. I go to my exit because that's what a reasonable person does in a scenario like this. And that's the end of that one. In this one, I light the dog up. You see he's wearing a muzzle in this one so he can do some muzzle punching. Good boy. He's lit up. You don't see the bad guy yet, but you will see him. I'll always remind the dog. And if he tries to leave my side during this training, he is corrected. Darsh. Okay, so he engages, Darsh is the engage, 
Darsh, buddy. Darsh, Darsh. Good boy. Get him. Good boy. Muzzle punching very well. Good boy. And I'm there supporting him the entire time. I'm not, you know, leaving him standing there like, you know, if you're ever in a real scenario, God forbid, you need to give your dog a constant stream of communication, you know, and remind him what he should be doing. Good boy. Okay, Darsh. Engage command. The dog engages. Again, you will never obviously do this in real life. This is just a sport training scenario. Um, you guys got this next level of control and protection on your dog, and uh, you get to see it now um, in action. So the dog out. Darsh. Okay, so you saw I made him let go there. Then I told him to re-engage. He re-engaged. Very good job. He's pushing hard. He's been shown a lot of different scenarios. He responds very well to all of them. This is an excellent dog doing a good job. Ouch! And then... Brrr, I can say... Brrr, if he is next to the bad guy, he should come to me. So in this scenario... Um, the bad guy is actually going to come out of the trees and stand between me and the dog. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, Rrr, and what that means is come next to me and protect me. Now the bad guy is being very threatening. Maybe he has a knife or a deadly weapon. He's telling me he's going to hurt me. And now I give the command to the dog to bite. The, do the bad guy changes his mind, tries to run away. Too late. The dog engages. Again, sport training scenario, guys. Not real life. Good boy. Good boy. These dogs are for deterrent purposes only. Ah! <laughs> 